down in Alabama, which is presidential racist, racist, with his governor having his lips dripping with the words of interposition and modification. One day, right there in Alabama, little black boys and black girls will be able to join hands with little white boys and white girls as sisters and brothers. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day every valley shall be exalted and every hill and mountain shall be made blue. The rough places will be made plain and the crooked places will be made straight. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all flesh shall see it together. Allusion. Thank you. Now, the last part that has been on the line, do we know where that is from? Now we see that um, he's having a dream that a prophecy will come to pass. Mm -hmm. And he is speaking to people who pretend to believe the Bible. Mm -hmm. So that's a way of uh, compromising them, you know, getting them on the side. Now the thing about this speech is that I have a dream is the basic thing. Therefore, there will be a pause after every And the purpose of that is, each time he says, I have a dream, the listener is eagerly waiting to see what is this new dream. Okay? So the dreams are many. I have a dream, what? That one day, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So the repetition there is, I have a dream. So let's read on read. The person who wants to know whether, okay, let's read on read. That is, um, and so let freedom read. And so let freedom ring from the prodigious hilltops of New Hampshire. Let freedom ring from the mighty mountains of New York. Let freedom ring from the heightening allegnies of Pennsylvania. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the curvaceous slopes of California. But not only that, let freedom ring from Stone Mountain of Georgia. Let freedom ring from Lookout Mountain of Tennessee. Let freedom ring from every hill and mole hill of Mississippi, from every mountainside. Let freedom ring. Do we get the idea of skills of repetition? You know, by the time you are through, everybody wants to say, let freedom ring. But apart from the music, there's also a very important skill here. Before not only that, freedom is raining from Northern America. Okay? From the Northern part. The place where there are no slaves. So he's saying, apart from these places that freedom is coming out from, is radiating, it also has to go to the south where they are still holding slaves. From every hill and wall. I'm sure he doesn't like the south. You know, because, um, well, I don't want to do serious statistics here, but you will see that for the places in northern. In the northern part, their uh, their geography has a tribal fortification. You have prodigious hilltops, mighty mountains, heightened alleys, snow capped rocks, curvaceous But by the time you get to the south, you just remember the mountain is mentioned: Stone Mountain, Look at Mountain, everything. <laughs>
so on. They are funeral orations. I am going to read two, three paragraphs. No, not all of them are funeral orations. The funeral orations, please just um, uh, read them. I don't know where this comes from. Um, but the speech by Professor Fagero, he closes it with a verse from scripture. And each time I read it, my head swells for Professor Fagero. He ends it with, as he will say to you on this day, God bless you all. Yes, and then he finishes with, I am distressed for you, my God. You have been very pleasant. When you say that, you feel that there's some love in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. Now, take home task, that's on page Oh, Please keep looking until you find it. It was read, it was said, it was said by the Supanish leader, Chief Seattle, made uh, during treaty negotiations to an audience that included the governor of Washington Territory, Isaac Stevens. And this is how he starts. He, has, he doesn't have a choice. He knows he is going to be in a subservient position. These people are going to take my land. I can only agree. But before I agree, let me just tell them a few home truths. Yonder sky that has wept tears of compassion upon our father for centuries untold, and which to us looks eternal, may change. Today it is fair, tomorrow it may be overcast with clouds. My words are like the stars that never set. What Seattle says, the great chief of Washington can rely upon, with as much certainty as our pale faced brothers can return, can rely upon the return of the season. The son of the white chief says his father sends us greetings of friendship and goodwill. This is kind, for we know he has little need of our friendship in return because his people are men. They are like the grass that covers the vast prairies where my people are thin and resemble the scattered trees of the storm swept plain. The great, and I presume also good, white chief sends us word that he wants to buy our lands, but is willing to allow us to enough reserve to live on comfortably. This indeed appears generous, for the right man no longer has rights that he needs to respect. There was a time when our people covered the whole land as the waves of a wind dropping sea covered the shell paper. But that time has long since passed, and with the greatness of tribes now almost. I will not mourn over our untimely decay, nor reproach my filthy brothers with hasty deed, for we too may have been somewhat to blame. And I will read to you the last paragraph, which is very frightening. Oh. Okay, well, it may be difficult for you to find find this, but let me just do it. Your God seems to us to be passionate. He came to the white man. We never saw him, never ever heard his voice. He gave the white man love, but he had no word for his red children, who stealing millions from this vast continent as the start school the family. No, we are two distinct races and must ever remain so. There is still in common before, between us. The ashes of our ancestors are sacred, and their final resting place is hallowed ground. While you wander away from the tombs of your fathers, sinning in the of God. Your religion was written on tables of stone by the iron finger of an angry God, lest you might forget it. The red man could never remember, nor comprehend it. Your dead cease to love you. And the hopes of their nativity as soon as they pass the portals of the tomb. They wander far away beyond the stars, they are soon forgotten and never return. Our dead never forget the beautiful world that we went through. They still love his winding rivers, his great mountains, and
and in simple standing. As they ever yearn in tender affection, both are the lowly hearted you and often the sort of sins and comfort. Day and night cannot dwell together. The red man has ever fled the approach of the white man as the changing mists of the mountainside in the blazing sun. Final, at night, this one sounds like a threat. At night, when the streets of your cities and villages shall be silent, and you think them deserted, they will flow with the returning hosts that once filled and still love this beautiful land. The white man will never be alone. Let him be just and deal kindly with my people, for the dead are not altogether powerless. Now, the white man is saying, let us be together. And this man can say, we can't be together, but he's saying, well, can we really be together? Thank you for your attention. Thank you.